Hello and hola friends. We are back with a unique story about a drug queen pen named Sandra Avila Beltran, known as La Reina del Pacifico Queen of the Pacific also known as the Queen of the South. There was a TV show about her journey in the drug business and how she built an empire. It used to come on USA and also Netflix, but USA canceled this show The Queen of the South. But you can catch the five seasons still on Netflix. I watched this show religiously every week and it was a very good show, to say the least. So, without further ado let's jump right into the story of Sandra Avila Beltran. Unfortunately, crime has always been a constant part of the human experience. The deviationist and the conformist are products of the same imagination and creatures of the same civilization. We can all turn into something horrible, all societies produce the criminals they deserve. It's mostly the case that men control the drug trafficking world, but the one woman who stood toe to toe with the greatest in the business was, yes, you guessed it right Sandra Avila Beltran Juan, who rose to the pinnacle of the Mexican drug business. Even when she was in prison, she wore fashionable clothes and employed many servants. What's up, everyone? Welcome to my YouTube channel. I update content regularly on crime stories like this. If you enjoy my content, please give this video a like and consider subscribing. Avila came from a family of narco royalty. She had lived in luxury as a child. She received personalized instruction, piano and dancing instruction, as well as regular outings to SeaWorld and Disneyland. The Guadalajara cartel's founder is related to her father, Alfonso Vila Quintero. She had a lot of money, and so did her family. She spent so much time counting money as a child that she was able to subsequently grab a handful of dollars and accurately determine their value, just like a cocktail party trick. When Avila was just 13 years old, she saw her first gunfight. She said that people were seen strolling the streets while carrying pistols at their waists while musicians were performing behind them. The music and shootouts were audible at dawn, and that's when they slaughtered the people. While Sandra's childhood companions quickly advanced to positions of authority within the Sinaloa cartel, the young Sandra pursued other avenues, using her wit and energizing 17-year-old Sandra to enroll in journalism studies. However, a jealous boyfriend abducted her three years into communication studies at the Universidad Autónoma de Guadalajara. He was a charismatic young man who had strong ties to the cartels. Her plans to pursue a career as an investigative reporter were dashed when she abruptly fled the area. Sandra Villa chose to work in the drug industry instead. She was a legendary shot and a reckless driver of cars. She was also an adept horseback rider. She allegedly made the most of her flirting skills as well. She remembered a potential suitor who bought her a pickup truck and brought it, along with flowers and a card, to her friend's house. A message with an envelope and the direction to spend the money on a trip that you want was included. It was $100,000. When she was 21, she started secret meetings with drug lord Amado Carrillo Fuentes, also known as El Señor de los Cielos, Lord of the Skies. Her routinely performed tasks evolved into a cartel. Due to her propensity for learning, she rose through the ranks swiftly and attracted the attention of men everywhere she went. However, Avila took great care to never consume cocaine herself. If you do it, men won't respect you and will see you as just another disposable woman. She spoke. She claimed that women are mistreated, ignored, and discarded in our world with approximately the same consideration as a little child would have for a Barbie doll. She pointed out that female narco equivalents do not have the same sexual freedom as their male counterparts and that narco commanders may have a harem of up to ten women. She claimed that women are never seen as combatants or people who have achieved great things, instead, they are seen as ornaments, objects, or necessities. Getting respect was her ultimate priority. Avila didn't want to just be invited to the party, 
she wanted to be the queen of cocaine. And it took less than ten years for her coronation to be completed. She had relationships with El Chapo Guzman, Rafael Caro Quintero, the top bodyguard for the Guadalajara cartel, and a senior Sinaloa cartel figure. She also commanded a 30-car flotilla and engaged in shooting competitions with Rafael Caro Quintero. For his 15th birthday, she bought him a Hummer, and then every few months after that, she paid him an allowance of $40,000. She loved jewelry and wore so many diamonds and rubies on a regular basis. When she checked the photos every few years, another member of her social circle had passed away. Her party life is captured in pictures that resemble a Kardashian's episode. But she had this air of invincibility. Her fortune changed in 2002. Avila's son was abducted and when she paid the $5 million ransom, the police stepped up their investigation and put her name on a most wanted poster. She fled and lived as a fugitive for a while. It is draining. Each person has a unique personality that is both compelling and a part of who they are. She said, it's hard to change that, to be someone else. She regularly switched residences, hair color, voice, and even wardrobe. She strove to appear normal and looking for happiness wherever she might find it. Adrenaline is a drug that can become addictive. There are those who desire to feel adrenaline, some with heights, some with guns, and others who feel adrenaline when they cheat on their partners, she said with a sneaky smile. That is the sin, the adrenaline, for which you risk being found out. She continued to live on the run for the following three years. She met Juan Diego Espinosa, a charming young cocaine dealer from Colombia, whom she subsequently fell in love with. Years later, when he was examined in prison, he estimated that he was transporting 10 tons of cocaine per month from Colombia to the U.S. via Mexico. Both of them were detained on September 27, 2007. This time, Vila didn't try to flee. I couldn't believe it when they shouted my name, so being arrested was a relief. She was imprisoned for a sizable amount of the ensuing decade, albeit in luxury. Avila's three servants provided food, alcohol, and cigarettes for visitors while other prisoners visited in a common area. Visitors were transported to Avila's cell. Jose Gerardo Meja, the first reporter to communicate with Vila when she was imprisoned, described Avila as a prisoner who wore jewel-encrusted, four-inch heels, and tailored attire, and was accorded reverence by her guards. Avila behaved with the air of a junior diplomat heralding the ambassador's arrival. Avila streamlined her beautification regimens. We used toilet paper tube curlers to style our hair. Your gray hairs were painted by us using mascara and eyeliner, she commented chirpily. We applied the clear hemorrhoid cream as a face lotion. She also acquired survival skills during her nearly two years in solitary confinement. When Avila was alone, she would imagine herself as a news correspondent who produced and broadcasted newscasts, gratifying her journalistic fantasies. While Venezuelan elections were taking place, she covered both Obama campaigns while listening to the radio in her cell. I used to watch the newscasts and look forward to the results. She penned letters to pass the time after being alone for months. Her contacts and calmness have been gradually returning since she was released in February 2015. She and a slew of attorneys are ferociously battling to recover about 15 mansions, 30 sports cars, and an estimated 300 gems. Her riches are largely buried. She recalled her favorite, a Bentley, adding, I had them all, Camaros, Trans AM, Mercedes, Audi. Beltran, a prominent Mexican drug lord who is quickly gaining notoriety, is suing Netflix and the Spanish language television network Telemundo for allegedly using her image to promote a series based on her life without her consent. According to an exclusive interview with Israel Razo, Avila's lawyer, by Mexican news outlet Milenio, Sandra Avila Beltran, 
formerly known as the Queen of the Pacific, is seeking to obtain 40% of all the profits generated by the two companies from the Queen of the South series, which has been broadcast on a weekly basis for more than 11 years. Vila purportedly claimed in a letter sent to Mexico's Institute of Industrial Property that both companies acted improperly with the objective of hurting my reputation and getting money off of it, IMPI. Her arrest was included in a news video that Telemundo utilized in April 2019 to advertise the show's second season, which is now available on Netflix. Top Mexican actress Kate Del Castillo portrays Vila Beltran in the Spanish-language television series La Reina del Sur, which is based on a book by Arturo Perez Revert. Revert has said out loud that his book, albeit with fabricated portions, is based on Vila Beltran. They tried to arouse the morbid curiosity of the public and to derive a financial benefit from it when they exploited my name and image to refer to the Queen of the South, Vila claimed in the materials Molina was able to collect. However, we will be asking for 40% of that sum, which won't be disclosed for security reasons, Razo said to Molina. Since Razo claimed that both businesses have been extremely sly while dividing the show's earnings, the total amount of the claim is still unknown. We will, however, request 40% of that amount, which will not be disclosed for security reasons, Razo told Molino. She stayed hidden until just lately when she appeared in one of the most well-known podcasts in Mexico, began a TikTok, and started posting on Instagram. In her most recent public appearance, she charged Felipe Calderon, a former president of Mexico, with cooperating with drug traffickers. She continued, I want to say that Felipe Calderon hurt a lot of people, including me. I endured a lot of pain and loss while I was incarcerated. However, he was the one organizing all the narcos activities. Well, that's it for today's video. We hope you enjoyed the content of the video. Kindly comment and subscribe for more true crime stories related to this.